Okay, welcome U.S. Virgin Islands Chess, your host Colin Heim, and we have another game you've selected from the uh, FIDE arena, and this was a 10 plus 10 rapid game. Uh, a very, very uh, <laughs> shocking result, and I've been wanting to share this game now for a while, but I've been busy with a few other uh, matches to show on the playlist. Anyway, without further ado, guys, let's get right underway. Boys and girls, adults, everyone in the Virgin Islands at home and abroad, our masters elsewhere, if you're watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, you guys are really going to like this if you're a chess player. Um, D4, started by my opponent here uh, from Italy. Uh, he selected D4, so I went uh, for modern defense as usual. I really like theory in the opening, guys, regarding modern defense. Um, read a lot of Fisher books with uh, black pieces, and he talks about a lot of theory here. So knight F3, let's just get right to it. Uh, B6. Uh, G3 now ready to uh, fianchetto the light squared bishops, and that's what happens. D5, not fianchettoing the dark squared bishop just yet. And after knight uh, B to D2, uh, bishop G7 is played, and this is the Nigel short opening. Uh, he double fianchettoed his bishops before developing his knights against Gede Kasparov, I think, in about 2010 at the St. Louis Chess Club in Missouri. Anyway, that was an epic game. I think it ended in a draw. Uh, it was a blitz game. So we'll call this the Nigel short opening for now, and... Uh, continue with what happens. So c3 guys, my opponent just giving more coverage now to the d4 pawn. Knight to f6 now, developing the kingside knight. Queen goes to c2 and we just see castles and my opponent castles as well. Okay. So rook to e8, not developing the queenside uh, knight just yet. Uh, now my opponent going a little early in on knight to e5 here. Now I get a chance to develop from knight b to d7 and after captures uh, queen to d7, Let's keep up the pace here, guys. Two minutes in. Knight to f3. Uh, queen to b5 was a question mark. It was a mistake and inaccuracy. And in this position, my opponent uh, put his other knight on e5 now. This is what he had planned for me. And knight to d7 is a blunder. This may this may lose, lose the game on the spot, guys. <clears throat> Everyone in this position, I encourage you to uh, find the best move for white in this position. Find the best move for white in this position. Well, I'll give everyone a hint. It is not knight captures uh, on d7, as the engine does not recommend. Uh, find something else here. Find the best move for white in the position. You can pause the video now. Okay, the move is a4. Yes, and now the queen has uh, virtually nowhere to go except to a6 square. As we see, that was played in the game. And uh, my opponent now capturing on d7, and white is up a full minor piece. And after uh, rook from a to d8, yes, we see uh, knight dropping back to e5, f f6, asking a question of team white's horse, drops back now to d3, of course, um, e5, best move. Um, going for something here now, very <coughs> desperate situation now for team black, uh, down a full minor piece, f takes e5. And bishop to uh, g5 was the continuation from my opponent. Yes, now rook is going to d6. And uh, b4, e5 now attacking the pony again on d3. And uh, b5 now attacking the queen. Okay, so guys, in this position, can we find the best move for black? Try to give everyone a couple of seconds. Pause the video. Is there a best move for black in this position? Right, queen to a5, obviously, the only square. Um... And my opponent continued with knight to uh, b4. And after knight to b4, h6, asking a question of the dark squared bishop. Bishop is now attacking, after that h6 maneuver, the d6 rook. And rook just swings over one square to the left. R rook e3 now. I have double rooks on the e-file. And e3. And c5. Okay, so c5 attacking the knight on b4. And after uh, B captures on C6, now en passant, capturing him behind, guys. We talked about en passant in some of the other previous videos and the other playlists. Anyway, my opponent opted for that. It was the best move in the position. And after Bishop recaptures on C6, we have H4. And Queen to C5. Uh, Queen to C5, really uh, the only move in the position. Um, not the best move now, because after Rook to C1 and... Uh, a5, which was also uh, not a recommended move by the engine, because now, guys, do we see where the knight is going? Just attacking the queen. The queen is running out of squares virtually to go to, and after this move, my opponent played knight to c7, and yes, guys, most people in this position would resign. Uh, however, uh, we get to continue and see what happened. 
So this position, take a look at it. Uh, there's a exchange fork here as the knight on c7 is backed up by the bishop on f4. And what did I play in this position, guys? Your instructor, your host, conducting black, g5, attacking the bishop. My opponent goes for the uh, e6 rook, which was the start of the mistakes now for my opponent. Because after g captures f and uh, recapturing g7 now with the king, as we see, uh, we see yes, g into f. And guys find the best move for black in this position now. Without looking at the notation, it should be a little obvious. Not even the engine, well, okay, now the engine sees it. Uh, green square, yes, queen h4. Queen captures on h4. And uh, here comes the beginning of the end, guys. Big, big, big surprises coming. Watch, watch closely now. c4 played by my opponent and rook to e6. And after c captures on d5, now rook is swinging over to g6 square, just in time. And my opponent played the fatal uh, move in this position. And can you guys see what is coming? Right, so in the game, we saw uh, my opponent from Italy here capture with the D, the D pawn, okay? And now, guys, without looking at the notation below, guys and girls, everyone, uh, find the winning move for black. Yes, down an entire rook uh, and, uh, and a pawn uh, in this end game and a bishop, right? So uh, down a very substantial amount of material, but in fact, there's a winning move for black in this position and the game is over. Did you guys spot it? Yes, queen to h3 and it's over. My opponent resigned. Yes, so if we take a look here with the engine, guys, with the Chess Base India uh, engine that we're using here, uh, any square uh, is, is, is really good. Uh, there are no moves um, in, this, in this position. Um, excuse me, guys, we got a little ahead of ourselves. I kind of messed up the notation here. Let me take it back for just a moment. Um, after this was played and uh, my opponent gave a check, actually, let me just take it back here. And, um, okay, let me, let me go back here, guys. Kind of, kind of messed up here. Um, okay, so instead, right, this was played, c4, and rook to e6, and after rook to e6, c took on d5, and after swinging the rook, then there was a queen check here, guys, and my king I had to go to h7, and the, and the most beautiful part about this position, guys, is that after this, there's actually no more checks for white, guys. After we find this discovered mating uh, net, uh, there are no more available checks, right? So <laughs> any move in this position is good, as I wanted to just demonstrate a moment ago, because, yeah, there. I guess maybe the best move would even be just uh, queen to h8. And after uh, king captures, there's still no continuation because there are no available checks. So this is checkmate. You can either mate with the rook or the queen. And it's over. So uh, sorry for messing that up there, guys, in the beginning. But uh, we just left out the uh, queen c3 check. right? So after rook to e6 and pawn captures, um, rook gets swung over to g6. And yes... Um, there was, there was one check here given on c3, and king just has to go over to h7. And in my game here, my opponent decided to capture with the pawn. That's the fatal move. And it was in this position with only a few minutes left on the clock after queen to h3, my opponent resigned. Actually, instead of queen to h3, you can also play, um, uh, you can also play this as well. Queen to g4 also works because it's just pinning the bishop and there's no more checks. There's actually no square that the king can go to now because as we see it's uh, trapped by the f1 rook. So there's just there's just no way. It's always um, g2 square mating. Yeah, so a real shocker here, guys. Down so much material uh, in a resignable position. Kept playing on. And, uh, you know, thankfully my opponent played the worst move in the position. Guys, let's take a look here. We're about almost 10 minutes now. What was a better move for uh, white in this position? Well, actually, you can just capture here, um, and this is going to be drawing after rook captures on g2, for example, and after king recaptures, you can always just go back and forth here with the queen, and after uh, a number of moves, there will be threefold repetition, and black can just claim a draw uh, down two full rooks, and that's fine. Black would be totally okay with that result. 
uh, but instead just uh, playing the fatal move here, uh, capturing the bishop. I think my opponent kind of lost sight of what was really going on and got really excited with all the material. Anyway, guys, remember positional initiative counts positional initiative, and that's exactly what we demonstrated here. Thank you guys so much for watching us. Virgin Islands Chess, your host Colin Heim, and we'll see everyone on the other side, and take care and have a lovely holiday season, guys. Okay, take care. Bye-bye for now.